and welcome to this month's Walk Around Kentucky. This segment features the Indian Fort Mountain Trail Systems, often referred to as the Pinnacle Hiking Trails. The Indian Fort Mountain Trail System is home to six hiking trails. It is known for the pinnacles where you can look out from either the east or the west. There are over 12 miles of connected trail that take you through various ecosystems and tons of breathtaking views atop rock bluffs. Most trails range from one to two miles, with the longest being a six mile in and out trail. There are primitive walls, natural arches, a robust wildlife, and so much more to see along the way. The forest is owned by Berea College and is one of the oldest managed private forests in the country. The thick forest has an abundance of rock formations and creeks and was once home to the Hopewell Indians from 100 BC to 400 AD. You can still observe evidence of prehistoric life if you look carefully. There are multiple sites to visit in the popular loop hiking trail. The Pinnacles Trailhead is located at 2047 Big Hill Road, Berea, Kentucky. If you're coming from Berea on the Big Hill Road, which is Highway 21, there's a parking lot and a forestry center on the left. Although masks are not required, be advised that it is recommended that you wear one when you are passing or near other hikers. These trails do have a high volume of traffic. No shortcuts are allowed, but there are a variety of path choices. The trails are open during daylight hours only and the parking lot gate is closed at dusk. Currently, the restrooms and the visitor centers are not open. The college asks that you practice leave no trace ethics and explore responsibly. By practicing no trace ethics, you can help keep this adventure for the future. Since there are bears in the forest, it is very important that you do not venture off the paths as you explore. For the safety of the bears and other wildlife, taking your food related items with you will help the wildlife. If bears get used to eating human food, they might want to acquire more, which could lead to unwanted behavior. The trails are primarily used for hiking, walking, running, and nature trips, and is best used from June until November. Dogs are also able to use the trail, but they must be kept on a leash. As you exit the parking lot, you will come to the main trailhead of the Indian Fork Mountain. This wildlife habitat is home to many of Kentucky's black bears, snakes, butterflies, trees, and flowers. These trails have a variety of oak trees, such as white oak, red oaks, chestnut oaks. Red and white oaks are only found in North America. The main ways to tell the difference between the two are by examining the leaves, acorns, and bark. White oak trees have rounded lobes and red oak trees usually have leaves with pointed lobes. The barks of these trees are also different. White oak bark has more grayish tinge and scaly look and texture. The red oak bark is naturally much darker. Some of the bark is so dark that it almost looks black. The red oak bark has deep furrows throughout the ridges, crisscrossing the bark. The acorns from the red or white trees are also different. Acorns in the white oak family mature from flower to falling off the tree in only six months, while acorns in the red oak family mature in 18 months. Acorns from trees in the red oak family generally have a higher tannic acid content than white oaks, making them more bitter. This may be why, given the choice between the two, studies have shown that the white-tailed deer will eat the white acorns first and turn to the red oaks only when others are gone. But it also helps explain another fact. Red oak acorns remain viable and edible far longer on the ground than white oak acorns. In fact, long after the white oak acorns are gone, or rotted, wildlife may still be feeding on red oak acorns if any were produced that year. 
about 90 of the world's 400 oak species are native to the United States. A red acorn with hints of fiber and overtures of carbohydrate will include more tannin than will a white acorn. The difference in the tannin and astringent chemical common in plants affects how wildlife use acorns. Although acorns from the red oak group tend to be higher in fat, protein, and calories and fiber than do acorns from the white oaks. The astringent quality, think of how when you pucker up, when you bite into an unripe fruit, of red acorns make them less palatable to wildlife, both due to taste and digestibility, which could explain why animals eat the acorns from the white oak group first. However, another explanation might be the acorns from the white oaks germinate shorter after nesting into the earth, while reds lay dormant for months, meaning the reds will be available as food longer. Wildlife were turned to nuts from the red oak in winter and into spring when the white oak varieties are gone. Acorns can compose more than 70% of the white-tailed deer's diet in late fall and early winter. Deer and other mammals, including black bears, alter their distribution patterns in response to the acorn production. When an acorn crop is especially good, may, deer may produce twin fawns, thanks to improved nutrition. A failed acorn season can cause wildlife populations dependent on acorns to decline. Of course, acorns are not the only things oak contribute to wildlife survival. The trees also offer shade and shelter leaves and twigs for building nests and even for eating and participate in the globe's exchange of oxygen and carbon dioxide as well as in how water moves through the ecosystem. The other trees you may come across are the shortleaf pines, magnolias and the yellow poplar. The yellow poplar leaves are turning a bright golden color this time of year and it is a lovely time in Kentucky as the tree leaves turn to a brilliant array of fall colors. You might also come across the eastern coma butterfly. The eastern coma butterfly's habitat is the moist woodlands and is generally seen in clearings or along edges and roadsides. It likes to feed on sap running from trees and sometimes alights on the ground, usually with the wings closed. If disturbed, it will often alight on a tree trunk or limb and set upside down with its closed leaf-shaped wings giving it perfect camouflage. Also along the way to the trails, you will walk by the Indian Fort Theater. This theater was designed by John Lippard and built in the Berea College Forest. This was the first outdoor theater in Kentucky and the only outdoor theater in the country sponsored by a college. Another thing you may see in the clearing is some of Kentucky's wildflowers. Look for this variant crossvine and trumpet wildflower. Pollinators such as the ruby-throated hummingbirds are commonly seen at tube-shaped flowers. As you pass the theater, you can choose to take the 1.2 mile Indian Fort Trail, which ends with an overlook of the forest, or the 1.2 mile Lower East Pinnacle Trail, which also has a scenic overlook. If you choose to continue the Indian Fort Trail, you will pass the Sacred Shadow Trail, which is 1.7 miles. It is a moderate trail through the western portion of the forest, ending in a scenic overlook and eventually leads to the West Pinnacle Trail. However, if you continue the Indian Fort Trail, you will come to another trail intersection. This intersection leads to where both the upper Pinnacle Trails cross if you continue going straight, you will pass the Devil's Kitchen and eventually reach the Indian Fort Lookout, which overlooks the forest. This is a rather rocky and difficult path, which goes up about 400 feet in elevation. So you will need to watch your footing so you don't slip. After the rocky scramble, along the way, you might see some rock openings. Here is the peak of the Devil Kitchens Trail, whose path loops through the natural rock formation, which also might be home to a bear in winter. 
In the winter months, bears in Kentucky usually den in rock cavities, hollow trees, or open dens in thick brush piles. Denning serves as a way for bears not only to survive, but successfully produce offspring during the cold winter months when natural foods are almost non-existent. While black bears are often referred to as hibernating during the denning period, this is not the case. Rather, bears enter a sleep-like state referred to as a winter torpor, in which they are fully capable of moving and even exiting the den. During that time, their metabolism slows so that all the reserve energy is used for basic life functions and milk production for cubs. Therefore, fall food abundance prior to denning, primarily in the forms of acorns, is critical for black bears in the South Appalachians. Black bears are omnivores, but their diet consists of both animal and plant matter. Do not leave food for the bears. Keeping bears wild in Kentucky is the best thing for our bears. In Kentucky, the return of black bears over the last 20 years is proving to be a true wildlife success story. Contrary to some beliefs, however, today's growing population is not the result of restocking efforts. As oak forests matured after extensive logging efforts of the early 1900s, bears recolonized these habitats from our neighboring states of West Virginia, Virginia, and Tennessee. Vast portions of the Kentucky region that were cleared for timber are once again matured to hardwood forest. Consequently, bears have filtered into, into Kentucky from our Southern Appalachian neighbors. As a result, Kentucky is now home to resident bear population. If you encounter a bear, remember that while black bears can be tolerant of people, they should always be treated as the wild animals that they are whether in a forest or in the back country. Black bears are rarely aggressive towards people and typically go out of their way to avoid contact. To minimize any unnecessary and potentially dangerous encounters, never approach a bear. As you pass the Devil Kitchens Trail, you will come across some steep steps. When you reach the top of the rock scramble, you will be rewarded with a gorgeous overlook. This is rather rocky, so you will need to watch your footing so you don't slip. Once you pass the Devil's Kitchen, you might want to stop for a break and enjoy the view. It's just a short trek to the Overlook and its breathtaking view. The last of the hike is steep, but you will enjoy the view once you get to the top. Lots of hikers seem to enjoy sunning themselves once they reach this point. The trails Uphill splendid lookout points are a favorite place for bird watchers. This spot is used for migrating and breeding songbirds. The forest has a cumulative bird list of more than 150 species. If you are visiting in the winter months, you could catch a glimpse of the Eastern BB. Although some migrate, many Eastern BBs remain in Kentucky during the winter, switching from a diet of insects to berries and seeds. The eastern phoebe is a brownish gray above and off-white below with a dusky wash to the sides of the breast. The head is typically the darkest part of the upper parts. Birds in fresh fall plumage show a faint yellow on the belly and a whitish edging along the folded wing feathers. See if you can identify some of the wildlife or foliage mentioned when you visit the Bria forest or in your own backyard. Thank you for attending this walk around Kentucky.